David, what? Look at you. We, I believe, what? Let's see, twenty-seven, I think, and uh, right. semifinals. This is this is some excellent work. Fun DMC. You showed up. You did fantastic. Everyone kind of expected it, though. You're a great player. How are you feeling about today? Um, I feel pretty good. I'm glad to be in the final four, um, but the job's not over yet. So now I'm facing Cameron. I know he's really good, um, but I studied my ass off for this one. So hopefully it pays off. Yeah, Cam Cameron's a great player. Nothing bad to say about him. Super nice guy. But this is, this is your time, and I'm looking forward time. to this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's I can already tell this is going to be a much more cool – cordial match in the first semifinal, and I'm very happy because it is too late for anything like anything like that happened. But Doc, we're here. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a really good match because you know David's David's a cool dude. Uh, it is insane that you know in his first year uh, he has gotten he's gotten this far, been this successful both in singles and in teams. Uh, but you know what? You've studied your ass off for this match as well. Uh, you you know you are one of the most well-rounded players in this league. You're frighteningly competitive, even though you have a very calm and welcoming demeanor. <laughs> you're very much like a you're very much a fireball when it comes to getting in the ring. Um, but you know what? We're gonna have some fun. This is gonna be a great match. What do you think? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play David. Uh, I I just I love the story of David in this tournament. Just. Losing his debut, having to play in, and then getting all the way here, beating Brian and everything. I think that's super cool. So ex excited to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, I'm ready to play. It's going to be fun. Uh, I died for a second. Mayor's Vegas, man. Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex Movie Warzone. Everyone is 100% okay and fine. Uh, this, this is going to be a fun match. We got the 7 seed going up against the 27 seed. Uh, this should be really fun. You know, Doc has made a big comeback uh, as we get into this the semifinals of this tournament in terms of where he was last year. And David, I don't know if anybody saw David coming. Uh, losing his first match, barely making it in by winning a play-in, and then just running this tournament. So both impressive runs from everybody all around. I'm excited. Holzman? Uh, yeah, like you said, this is going to be interesting. It's sort of the idea of the person who came back from where they were last year to do really impressive things versus the person who came back from where they were this year to do really impressive things. Uh, two very different comeback stories, but both nonetheless uh, making good efforts. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Absolutely. So without further ado, we'll uh, get started with round one. Round one's going to work like this. Eight different questions, eight different categories. You get all your right. You get a bonus question. You get eight questions, whatever category you get. You get it right. Uh, you get one point. Uh, you're going to have three repeats and a challenge uh, throughout the entire round. Should you need to remember to keep your hands on screen at all times. Get into your first question, which comes in the category of sci-fi fantasy. What country does District 9 take place in? Um, you know, uh, one of them I, movies, I'm waiting right? to watch this movie until I see uh, the, all the movies that came before in the franchise. I was just gonna say this is one of them Hunger Games movies, right? This is one of those. It's about the kids from the district where they farm uh, uh, snakes and uh, beer pong. Well, hands down. Let's go to David. Uh, South Africa and Red Shop. I also said South Africa. Both correct. That's a country. I live for Andrew's kids <laughs> both reactions backstage. Uh, as you get into your second question, in the category of actors and actresses. What actress has played a superhero, a senator, and an angel? Uh, you know who's all three of those things. I'm asking, do you know who's all three of those things? <laughs> this isn't a rhetorical question. I'm going to give you the answer. I'm asking, do you know who all three who is all three of those things? Repeat. Okay, that is David's first repeat. Absolutely. Uh, your question once again in the category of actors and actresses: What actress has played a superhero, 
a senator and an angel. And again, I mean, like, not, I don't, I'm not asking for the answer to this question. I'm asking, like, what real human being that actually exists is all three of those? This isn't a rhetorical question. I don't know the answer. I don't know what a senator is. <laughs> Come on, you don't know, know what a rat is. Oh, this is. Three, two, one. You also don't know what a rat is. Redshaw. I said Holly Hunter. And David. This is wrong, but not Kate Winslet. Holly Hunter is correct. Wow. The films being The Incredibles, uh, Batman vs. Superman, and A Life uh, Less Ordinary. As we enter your third question in the category of scores and soundtracks. Who composed the scores for the first three films in the Jason Bourne series? Uh, you want to know a joke that my my dad, who is a pastor, uh, likes to make? I'm gonna I'm gonna guess the punchline before you tell the joke, and I'm gonna assume it has something to do with being born again. That is exactly okay. <laughs> Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Okay, that is Cameron's first repeat. In scores and soundtracks, who composed the scores for the first three films in the Jason Bourne series? Yeah. That, that is, it's that almost is like I've point. grown up in and still currently work in the church system. And so I know what all the standard wow. religi religious jokes are. Three, uh, one, pens down. Let's go to David. Alexander Desplat. And Red Shop. I guess James Newton Howard. Both incorrect. Looking for John Powell. Oh. How's your dragon guy? Uh, your next question comes in the category of horror. I have to mention it. Uh, what 70s horror film features a villainous funeral home worker known as the tall man? Uh, you know, many people recently learned of another villainous tall man named Caleb Boatman. <laughs> As apparently you being tall was some sort of well kept secret that I wow. wasn't supposed to know about. <laughs> Three, two, repeat. One. Okay. Uh, that is David's second repeat. Your question in the category of horror What 70s horror film features a villainous funeral home worker known as the tall man? Uh, yeah, like everyone seemed so surprised when they, they saw those pictures of you existing as a tall person and Four, i sat here knowing three, full well you were six two, feet tall one pens down let's go to david phantasm and red shot i said don't look now phantasm is correct oh. so here i'll write up two to two as we get into your fifth question the category of comedy in national lampoon's christmas vacation what does Clark Griswold plan on buying with his Christmas bonus? Uh, this is like my dad's favorite Christmas movie, and I had never seen it until uh, like a couple years ago. Because every year on Christmas, we'll watch a movie and we rotate who gets to pick. Three, you know, his pick. two, one. You watch one movie. Let's go to as a family. <laughs> who? Right, right, uh, pool. And David. Cool. Cool or swimming pool, both correct. Uh, so we go to your next question in the category of Westerns. Who starred in the following Westerns? The Oxbow Incident, How the West Was Won, and Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, Thank you, Boatman, for writing what you just wrote in the private chat. David, could you angle uh, your board a little bit so we can see your Thanks. Uh, thank you for putting that message in the private chat after I also already did the thing. Uh, uh, wheel too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Two wheels, two furious. Uh, Five. And that's the Four. whole joke. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, pens down. Let's go to David. Charles Bronson. And Cameron. I also said Charles Bronson. Both incorrect. Looking for Henry Fonda. I erased that. No. Oh, <laughs> thank God. Uh, and your pen also went question in the category of quotes. In what 2010s war film 
will you hear a character repeating the line, help me get one more? Who's more likely to say this, a soldier in a war or DJ Khaled? No, DJ Khaled says another one and then his I, own name. Uh, apparently he wrote a book uh, and not like not like an autobiography four. or a book of poetry, like a narrative book. Two. <laughs> Pens down. Let's go to David. Fury. And Cameron. Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge is correct. I was thinking that too. As we get into your final question around number one, which comes in the category of crime movies. In The Usual Suspects, how are the five main characters initially brought together? I need to hear more about the C.J. Khaled book. Uh, I don't know much about it other than just like he doesn't just say his own name. Like, like you could assume he does what he does with his music, where other people write it for him, and then he just puts DJ Khaled at the end of every page. Uh, um, pins down, pins down. Let's go to David. No, I'm blank. Sorry. And Cameron. So I just wrote lineup. I didn't know the name of it, like a suspect lineup. I think we can accept that. Yes, I don't know. Oh, that's how you're. I don't they, they are brought in for a police lineup. I misunderstood the question. Um, okay. Okay. So it is five to three coming out of round one. Uh, so uh, Red Shot in the lead with five, David at three. As we get into round two, round two, Holzman, you put the effort into making the wheel. I'll let I'll let you bring your wheel up unless you closed it. Nope, I did not. Okay. It's already priming and everything right now, so we're good. Oh, I messed up. It oh. auto filled. No. Okay. We're, we'll use my will. Okay, we're going to get into round two. Round two is going to work like this. Uh, each competitor is going to get a chance to spin the wheel. If they like what they spin, they can keep it. If they don't, they can spin again, but then they are stuck with it. They're going to get five questions in whatever category they get. They get it right, two points, multiple choice, one point. If they get it wrong, other player gets its chance to steal. Categories on our lovely wheel tonight are... Redshaw strengths of Oscar nominated Paul or Oscar nominated Jack Lemon and post night and stop motion. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what they have on their lovely wheel tonight. Redshaw strengths of Oscar nominated Jack Lemon and stop motion animated movies. David strengths of John M. Chu and post 1990 director filmography. We also have war, romantic comedies, westerns, and biopics. So Redshaw, you are in the lead. Bring in your de facto manager. Would you like to spend first or De facto manager. I, I <laughs> love that. Love that. Uh, I right, say we're gonna... we go, I, I'd say I'd say we go second. It's a pretty balanced wheel. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'll defer. David, this will be your spin. All right. And you uh, land on opponent's voice. <laughs> what? What, oh, what did you say? Oh, no. Really? Jason, really? Oh. <laughs> right, Joe, what was to you, David? All right. Uh, um, you want to go Jack Lemon or do you want to go stop motion? I, I'm you? leaning towards stop motion. This is my first opponent's choice, so this could backfire. No <laughs> no uh, In terms yeah, of skills, I, uh, what, 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 what do you think you'll be able to get four points on? Probably stop motion. Uh, I I was leaning that from the beginning, so all right. I'd say let's we'll, do that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll then we'll go stop, stop motion, motion animation. Okay. Just keep trusting your gut. Uh, I will give you your questions in the realm of stop motion animation. Your first question: What is the name of Doug's pet boar in Early Man? Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A. Trebor, B. Asbu, C. Emac, D. Hognob. D. Hognob. That is correct for one point. Your next question. In Coraline, the retired old lady Spink and Forcible had what profession?
Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, veterinarians, B, opera singers, C, taxidermist, D, florists. B, opera singers. That is correct for one point. That scene is scarier than anything else in that movie. <laughs> Your third question. In what stop-motion film will you find the characters Barkus Bittern, Elder Gutnicht, and Madeline Everglot? Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, the Box Trolls, B, Mary and Max, C, Missing Link, D, Corpse Bride. The Box Trolls? That is incorrect, Cameron, for the one point steal. Your options are A, the Box Trolls, B, Mary and Max, C, Missing Link, D, Corpse Bride. Corpse Bride. That is correct for one point. Oh. Okay. Your penultimate question. Who voices Elsa Van Helsing in Frankenweenie? Winona Ryder. Correct for two points. And your final question. My life as a zucchini takes place in what country? Switzerland. Correct for two points. So it is nine to six as we get into Red Shaw's round two. Bring in Thomas. And your first spin is going to land on Spinner's oh, Choice. Uh, Red Shaw, you want to do, oh, my God. You want to do Lemon? Uh. I think so. Um, or do you want to see the uh, the uh, category skin? I'm just worried. It's, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, yeah, can I look at the categories again? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> and we do need to set you uh, an answer kind of quickly. Okay. So, so now we need Jack Lemon, John M. Chu, War, Romantic Comedies. Uh, post-1990 director filmography, Western, and biopics. Yeah, probably Jack Lemmon. All right, go with sense. Lemon. Yeah. Remember, trust your gut, because you went against it in round one, and it cost you a little bit. So just, just trust yep. that gut. If you're not sure, multiple choice. Okay. Holtzman, I will let you give Cameron his questions in the category of Oscar-nominated Jack Lemmon. Absolutely. Uh, Redshaw, your first question. In The Odd Couple... What did Felix make that gets burned the night the twins come over? I'll go multiple choice. Uh, all right, your options are A, ham, B, meatloaf, C, beef stroganoff, or D, chicken parmesan. Meatloaf. That is correct for one point. Uh, your second question. In Mr. Roberts, what does Pulver throw overboard towards the end of the film after receiving news that Roberts died? Uh, it's palm tree. That is correct for two points. Uh, your third question. Who directed That's Life? Blake Edwards. Correct for two points. In what European city is the titular race set to end in the great race? Paris. Correct for two points. And your final question. Who plays opposite Lemon as crew chief Ted Spindler in the China Syndrome? Wilford Brimley. And that is correct for another two points. Right. So it is 15 to David's nine. Is that what you have, Holtzman? 
Uh, that is what I have as well, yeah. As we get into round three, round three is going to work like this. Each competitor is going to get to pick what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four-point question. Categories they will be able to they will be able to pick from tonight are Billy Wilder, sports, 90s, movie, movie release dates, music, comedy, musicals, and drama. We're going to let them pick their categories right now, and we will get back to you right now. Okay, so we're back, and our competitors have picked what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four-point question. David has picked his one in comedy, his two in 90s, his three in sports, and his four in movie release dates, whereas Cameron has picked his one in musicals, his two in drama, his three in movie release dates, and his four in Billy Wilder. So, uh, since I gave David his questions in round two, I will use red chat his in round three. Hopefully, I'm going to start us off with David's one in comedy. Absolutely, your one-point question in comedy. What 2010s comedy features Seth Rogen, James Franco, and Jonah Hill all playing themselves? This is the end. Correct. One point. Uh, we will stick with you for your two-pointer in the category of the 1990s. What government agency is chasing after Robert, an enemy of the state? NSA. Correct for two points. Sorry. 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 Say that well. Uh, we will stick with you still for your three point question in sports to tie it up. Your question What MLB team does Jim go to a tryout for that he eventually gets called up for in The Rookie? The Tampa Bay Devil Rays. That is correct for three points. Okay, so we're going to go to Cameron for his one in musicals. Who plays Sally Bowles in Cabaret? Liza Minnelli. Correct for one point. Okay, we are in a situation where David has to hit his four in movie release dates or else Doc does win the game. Absolutely. So, what? I'm sorry, I was just going to start reading the question. Yes. Uh, so, okay. uh, David, reminder, you have one repeat. Your four-point question in movie release dates. What year saw the release of the Jimmy Stewart Western Winchester 73? Five. Four, three. Repeat. That is your last one. Your question. What year saw the release of the Jimmy Stewart Western Winchester 73? Hmm. 1961. Oh. And your winner. Moving on to the finals of the tournament, Cameron, the Dr. Redshaw, the correct answer was 1950. 1950. Oh, my God. I was thinking that. Too. All right. So uh, we're going to go to post-match interviews, starting with David. David, uh, couldn't quite pull off the win tonight, but don't let that take away from an incredible run in this tournament. I think your tournament run – was legitimately historical. Uh, Lois, I know I talked about if I thought it was, it is official. You are the lowest seed to ever make it to the semifinals of a tournament in Warzone. Awesome. So good job on that part. Uh, how are you feeling overall? Um, I can't say I'm like, and I feel disappointed a little bit, but uh, I did, I did go neck and neck with him kind of in round one. Round two just didn't go my way, so that's how I lost it. Um, yeah, I mean, did as best as I could with his with his one of his strengths, um, you know. But yeah, just I guess next year. Couple opponents and spinners' choices. Yeah, I just, so it is what it is. So, but I did my best. Yeah, I mean, David, there's you, there's nothing to look down on. You made it really far in this tournament. You played some incredible players and beat some of the, like the top tier players that are always going to be fighting for championships in the future, and as you will be at some point. It's 
it's hard, like like Bowman just said, yeah. when you go spinner, when they get opponents and then spinners, it's really like that does not happen where someone can win off of that. And you fought hard through it. You did everything you could. Tough four pointer. Normally you're great with move release dates. It's hard, but you fought your way through. There's absolutely nothing to hold your head down on. The wheel just hit you a little hard today, and it's rough to go out like that. But yeah. you had a great tournament, and we I know you'll do great when singles comes back up again. Like, you know, I'm proud of you. All Fun DMC is proud of you. You've done a great job. So there's that's all I got. That's it. Yeah, I'm just glad I was representing Fun DMC as long as I, as I could. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Absolutely. Well, now we'll go over to our winners, uh, Cameron Redshaw and Thomas Scully. Cameron, you pulled off the win. How are you feeling? Uh, really excited. <laughs> um, it, it feels a little bad that it was opponents and spinners, uh, but he did really well in stop motion. Like, he clearly put in the work. Um, and also, uh, I've had my share of, of bad wheel luck, and I'm kind of okay with getting a break one time. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Very excited. That's fair. Uh, yeah, so uh, you will be playing the winner now of either Jake Marangoni or Caleb Boatman. How do you feel about either of those potential matches? Uh, 10 and 4 sounds like a nice record. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> Here's the okay. thing. Okay. Uh, Skull it's... again, isn't that? Yeah, fact, look, man, whoever... Who, look, it's it's rough that that D David got the wrong end of the spinner's choice, opponent's choice. It happens to everyone, but he battled back. He got his one, two, and three, and then you know that's a that's a really rough four in in release states. Um, but you know what? Whoever you know, and Doc, he played. You know, if if he, I think we need to work on trusting our gut a little bit more. Could have had no went to round one, puts put a little bit more pressure um, on our opponents. Um, but whoever we face, it, it's going to be a tough fight because Doc is he's a scary player. And I who, and wh whether it's Jake or whether it's the old man robot above me, uh, <laughs> he's going to come out playing his best. So um, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that it's going to be a good fight. Well, thank you to Redshaw. Thank you to Scully. Holzman, final thoughts on the match? Uh, yeah, this was a good match. Uh, like everyone sort of said in the, in the post-match interview, uh, sometimes the wheel can dictate how things go, and tonight... The wheel giveth and the wheel taketh away. Absolutely. It's one of those nights uh, David still did his best to fight back, but that four-pointer was was a tough one and just wasn't in his favor. But like you said, just his run getting here was incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. I think that's the story of the season so far, uh, and it'll be interesting to see where we go moving forwards. Absolutely. Well, thank you to Holswin. Thank you to Cameron Redshaw. Thank you to David Nishimoto. Thank you to their de facto managers for the night. Well, David's actual manager, Cameron's de facto <laughs> manager. I'm your host, Caleb Bowman. This has been Multiplex Movie Board Zone. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye. bye.